Oh, whoops. Hey, Joel. Let's Sorry. Start, let's start over again. I would like to start differently for Joel's video. Okay, hold on. You gonna cut this thing or edit? Hey, Joel. You, can you edit these things? Oh, I thought you were... I thought... I thought you were saying, like, let's just give it a fresh start. Oh, okay, let's give it a fresh start. Are you ready? Okay. Joel. Hey, Joel. Why, why, are we playing, why are we playing games, Joel? Why are we playing games like like we're not the bestest of friends in the world? You know, I just want to take a second mm -hmm. and just say, hey, Joel, across these many miles of interwebs, across all these wires and electricity, just want to say, hey, man, I love you, dude. I love you, too, Joel. And, uh, Meg. Meg! What? Hey, we're saying hey to Joel. Hey, Joel. Come, come say hey to Joel. Can you not even come up the stairs for Joel? I don't look perfect. Just, just lean uh, in your head. It's fine. Just, the camera's right here. Come here. You can just lean your head in. Hey, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth it. That was worth it. Thank you. Thanks. Joel, thanks so much for doing this. <laughs> even, our, even our dog says even hey, Even our dog Joel. says hey. Um, we, uh, for everybody else who doesn't know, Joel, uh, is one of our brothers, uh, incredible brothers in Canada, and when we were first becoming a band, he was looking to check out some communities, so he hitchhiked from Canada down to Charlotte, North Carolina, and spent a summer with us, and spent half of a tour with us, and mm -hmm. probably spent one of the greatest moments of our lives yes. together, the hardest I've ever laughed in my life, uh, and <laughs> one of my fondest, like, if I died in a hundred years, it would still be a top 10 memory, mm -hmm. was with Joel laughing my head off in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, love you, Joel. Thanks for sending us a video. And congratulations on your marriage to Bronwyn, who's a sweetheart. Yes, congratulations, so, guys. For the rest of you, I hope this wasn't too awkward, <laughs> but we needed to get it out of the way. Um, but anyway, uh, Joel asked about our community. Um, like we talked about before in other videos, that we... Uh, we we started a community, which is still weird wording. Like there was already yeah. there was already community there, but we um, started, I guess, intentional community. We were a community of three that moved to Charlotte. Yeah, we were that already became a lot bigger. Yeah, we were already a community. That, That's a really good way. We were already an intentional community, but we tasked ourselves with a more focused purpose. Uh, moved to Charlotte and did that. Uh, I was there for four and a half years total, and actually, we both were. Um, but, uh, you know, the house is actually, as we speak this month, is, uh, is coming to a close. The guys mm -hmm. who took over a year ago uh, have just come to the point where things need to change. Uh, but it's really interesting because I think we've come to the realization uh, that, in, that the, the legacy of it is built so much more than that. Um, mm -hmm. to, be, to be honest with you, uh, everyone, a lot of the people that lived in the community now are living in community elsewhere. And no one left on bad terms. We didn't have anyone who was like slammed the door and walked out. It was all... It's honestly just young people being young. Like, hey, I feel led to go here. I feel led to go there. You know, I think if we were starting it now, it probably would last a lot longer because we're just not people. The older you get, the more God kind of gets you firmed up and gives you a foundation somewhere. And eventually he settles you somewhere. For, for most of us, he's going to settle you somewhere where you'll probably do ministry for for a long time. So, uh, But the cool legacy of it is, Joel, is um, that Zach and Sarah, Zach lived in our house for, uh, for over two years, incredible dude, and his wife Sarah now live uh, in community with TJ and Sheena, who TJ and Sheena lived in the guy and the girl house, and they, I think, were our first community marriage. Um, they certainly were the first yeah, couple I to think come they, and get... They, they, they were the first couple to meet in the community yeah. and get married. They met in the community. He was a friend of ours from college, and Sheena was a friend we made living in Charlotte. And incredible people. Um, and they also gave birth to the first... Our, our community ended up being called Makina. Uh, and they made, gave the first Makina baby, yeah. um, Sailor. Now they're making a second one, a, a sequel. Uh, Wes, who you know very well, uh, lives with Elbin and his wife, Sarah, in Richmond. He, you also know Elbin really well. So, yeah. In so you forgot. All part of that incredible memory. And, uh, and I live with Jeremiah and Maggie. Uh, we share a house here together in, in Virginia. And actually, truth be told... Jesse lives a mile away with his wife, Brooke. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what we're seeing is that uh, even though that particular iteration of community uh, had a season to it, um, that we're all still seeking it out. The truth was, I, I, I've never really wanted to live on my own. I don't mind it. It's not like I can, can't handle being alone, but I just enjoy sharing my life with other people, and that's the same. Re that's what they were looking for, too. And uh, it just 
it's just what we prefer. And I know that for me, you know, when I do, when I am blessed with a wife, that a high priority for me is someone who is, is open to the idea of living communally. Um, because I just, I just think it grows so many beautiful things in my life and I just enjoy it so much. And it's really such a practical way for me of battling, uh, letting the gospel get too tangled up with the American dream. It's not the only way to battle that, but it is one of the main ways. Yeah, I say the uh, the older we get, I think the less it becomes a choice and the more it becomes just... Um, the natural outflow of uh, our desires. Um, mm. It wasn't like, hey, Aaron, do you want to start a community again in Fredericksburg now that we're going to be living near each other and working together? It's just, hey, why wouldn't we live together? Um, we love spending time together. Um, in most nights uh, that we hang out, we're going to be bummed that we're one of us is going to have to leave and go home. It just doesn't make it as much sense anymore to us. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest difference now is is that before we were making decisions to, to be in community or not to be in community, and it was this thing, and now it's just, no, this is the kind of lifestyle that we want to pursue, and it's it's no longer a decision process anymore. It's just going to be the natural thing for us um, as far as living near each other. Mm -hmm. And as far as living what I think <clears throat> conceptually in a community, um, I think that's going to come a lot with our, our maturity um, in the sense that we actually are being the church to one another um, and that we're not... Um, I don't know what, what I think. I guess before I mentioned, you know, programs versus people, um, we've just got a clearer understanding of what we think that us living out the church is um, than we did five or six years ago when we started uh, down in Charlotte. So now it's just much more um, through the grace of God and um, the Holy Spirit's leading. It's just more what's the natural outflow of our life. Um, so I don't know if that clears anything up, but for us, it's a big difference. And I think too, and I think this is true for both of us, but how I think is, I just don't enjoy doing a lot of things alone. Um, I don't, I like spending time alone and I know Jeremiah is the same way that it's crucial to our spiritual walks, but as far as major tasks, if, if I'm talking about a task, like, I mean, someday I'd like to write a book. There's a lot of th ideas I've had, but the idea of writing a book alone just doesn't excite me. The idea of getting two or three friends together and, and working on that project, I mean, it's just that whole biblical idea of, you know, the the many heads, you know, having the many hands having better, um, I can't think of the exact, the exact verse right now, but having better return for their for their effort, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the whole threefold chord. So I just, uh, I just enjoy tackling life with people um, a lot. Uh, so, I mean, I do, I covet my alone time and I'm, I've, it's kind of one of the, a seat, the one of the part of my flow of my life now as I get away at certain times for, for a week or for a weekend uh, and just get alone with the Lord and don't talk to anybody. Uh, but as a, as a means of life, I just love engaging life with a team. I just mm -hmm. love being part of a team um, and seeing the other strengths and weaknesses that come to it. Um, and the thing is, uh, you just can't skip forward with relationships. You know, you can't take a one-year-old relationship and make it equal a five-year-old relationship. It just it just takes time for that sweetness to grow. So I've just been blessed to have a lot of friends I've had in my life for a long time now and, and to have a lot of them in the same area and to get to work together. And it just makes for an incredible uh, harvest in different areas. So, Yeah, we've talked a lot about how, probably we take it for granted, but how special of a, a situation that we have um, to be around um, so many other people that we think are really solid believers that are really pursuing God. Um, nobody's perfect, but uh, to be around this many people that I think, uh, I'm just like, this is really special, and I know that not a lot of people have this, and I really hope that we're responsible with this, and um, and I really hope that God has you know even bigger plans for us. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that encourages you guys. Um. And in my heart, like, um, I think I said it to someone over the other day when they were telling us, the other guys that were running the house, that they were going to go ahead and disband it for now. In my heart, it was like, well, you can't disband something that is us. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's us. You know, that community is is uh, is who we've become. It's sh shaped us. And everybody who lived in that house, it's a camaraderie 
and it's changed how we affect the world around us. And now you kind of see it like a cancer. It's just growing, you know, in a really positive way. Uh, it just keeps going. And, and that's something, I'm, you know, we'll, we, we will continue to engage community because it's just become part of our identity. Uh, and I'm sure that the iterations of it will just continue to change as we grow older. Um, but it's just something we talk a lot about whenever we walk into a new community or a new culture or a new environment, we're kind of assessing how healthy is the community here. It's one of the questions we talk a lot about at the church we attend is what is, what is, how healthy is the community? People really have community. Are people really, Mm -hmm. and I know it's a question you wrestle a lot with Joel is are people really having community? Are they really sharing their lives? Are they living together? Are they just intersecting? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're always trying to push people to really live their lives together because it's just so much better. Uh, but it is invasive at first, and it's for some people it's really different. So, mm-hmm. so I guess that's it. I guess so. I guess we just Joel. You need to just come down here and spend uh, spend a couple weeks or a couple. Yeah, this of is an official invite to Joel and Braun. When we have a mm-hmm. guest room, it's beautiful sunroom. Uh, we've just a little modest house, but we'd love to have you come stay, man. Mm-hmm. So really love you guys. Miss you. Um, hopefully, we'll see you soon. Uh, we got to pick a new festival now, I guess, uh, to meet up at. Um, R.I.P. Cornerstone. R.I.P. Cornerstone. All right. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Thank you.